What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of career mode this is episode number 114 and today we are returning with our second episode with Real Madrid and guys it's one of my favorite episodes of this series almost 17 minutes of transfers it's a transfer special today as we begin the rebuild with Real Madrid. I can't wait to see what happens today. So, of course, we started off with Real Madrid by making our first two signings of the season. Uh, two freebies. Ibanez coming in, a good young central midfielder from Spain, 80 rated already as a teenager. And, of course, Manuel Neuer's regen arriving as well. So, we're just under quarter of a billion to work with. Buckle up, guys, because this is a great episode. So, as we know, we're doing the free agent scouting right now, and I briefly touched on it in the last episode. I'll be looking for players that I know, despite a full range of scouting, they'll have the ability, and that's because they'll be in the promising or first-team quality scouting list that my Global Transfer Network scouts find for me. This guy is in the promising list. It's Juan Ruibal, and he looks really decent. 17 years old, 72 overall, high, high work rate. very high-energy type of box-to-box -box midfielder, I would say. Looks pretty solid, and again, I have mentioned before, um, I might possibly at the end of this season, towards the end of December or maybe sometime in January, uh, do a special video where I show you my Global Transfer Network scouting uh, updates, updates, uh, sorry, criteria, and show you how I found the guys in the promising one. This was in the promising tab, as you can see, I'm going to train to a left wing back, he's got a little bit of pace about him, a decent dribbler in the ball as well, and we've got an abundance of CMs here already, so as a backup left back, I think he'd do alright in this team as the future goes on, and also John Sepulveda as well. Uh, another 17-year-old Spanish freebie. You know, we mentioned we took over Real Madrid. For this season, we only had 21 players in our squad. It was important to fill the squad out, but not spend much money doing it. What's the best way to do that? Free agents. Yeah, this guy is an exciting prospect. Another great Spanish midfielder. There are a ton of them on the free agents list right now. And again, looks really decent as well as an advanced playmaker in this team. But I thought, you know what? I've got four freebies. There's a quarter of a billion pounds in my bank balance. Let's splash some real cash. And for my first proper transfer of the Real Madrid era, I was going to bring back a former Milan player. But it wasn't the one you were thinking of. No, I wanted to bring this guy to the Bernabeu because he was the first player we signed with AC Milan. We converted him from holding mid to CB after we picked him on a free transfer. He grew really nicely. But we didn't give him that much game time. However, he was a starter in our Champions League final victory over Manchester United. The guy's clearly got some talent. Of him being Spanish as well, and us having a defensive crisis here, I wanted to bring him to the Bernabeu. Yep, it's 21-year-old Fabricio Castaneda. I offered Milan a deal that included Andy Robertson. 33.5 mil valuation, but now in his mid-30s, due to decline or retire very quickly at 84 overall. And in the end, after putting in a sell-on clause of 10%, plus a 15 million pound offer, at his second time of asking, we managed to get AC Milan to accept the deal for Fabricio. He learned a lot under me when I was managing him in the two years with Milan, changing his position from holding mid to CB, making him a defender in this team and not a midfielder. And he's coming back with me to Spain to the Bernabeu. Yeah, 15 mil plus a player who I wasn't going to use in Andy Robertson with an abundance of left backs here. We didn't need him. And again, I really like this guy. He's a physical monster. Great all across the board. Low high work rate, six foot two. And a great defensive player in this team. I, I personally believe we made a brilliant call transitioning him from holding mid to CB. I think in this team, He's going to be a starter. He wasn't a regular starter with Milan. He was regularly either on the bench or in the reserves. We knew that last year Santos and Tap so Woody duo we went with ordinarily. But for 15 million and an aging player in Andy Robertson, that's a brilliant deal as Castaneda comes back to Spain. So following out two big bids, one for Valverde, which of course we rejected, and also Bayern Munich putting a bid for John Stones, yeah, from Everton to Manchester City to Bar uh, to Real Madrid to Bayern Munich now. 25.5 mils to fee we managed to negotiate there with the Germans, who as we know last season had a really poor year in the Bundesliga. They think John Stones will be the answer to their problems. And also a bid here for Marcos Senesai as well, another aging centre half, 31 years old, 85 overall. We are going to completely change the back line with Real Madrid. So after I negotiated a deal with uh, Valencia there, I was totally fine seeing him go to the Mustaya. But this was the interesting one. I was okay accepting the bids there for the two players in their 30s at centre-back. 
But this was an interesting one. Morgan Jackson. Do you remember him? Well, you probably do if you watched the Brentford years. For the final two or three years with Brentford, this guy, every time he played for Manchester United, tore me apart. A new gen slash regen English striker who's now 87 overall has wound up from Old Trafford to the Bernabeu. He's pulled a Cristiano Ronaldo and he's a pretty decent player. However, there was a chance for us to get a good Spanish new gen from Wolves as Bruno Lage included him in the swap deal. An attacking midfielder by the name of Alberto Quiroga, already 83 overall at just 21 years old. And after we managed to negotiate 65 mil, along with a Spanish playmaker as well, I thought this would be a mutually beneficial deal for both parties. Jackson going back to England, Quiroga coming back to Spain, and I've got to say, I think for 65 mil getting included in the deal there as well, that's a pretty decent bit of business with Bruno Lagia's Wolves. So going down the list of free agents, uh, one of the players I really wanted went to Barcelona of all clubs, a 16-year-old Spanish fullback. However, I did find this guy, Gonzalo Montes, once the full range of scouting had been finished. He wasn't in my promising tab, which was quite surprising because... He's 17 years old, yet already 75 overall. For some reason, the development plans will be quite slow for his growth, and I don't really know why. He's 17. He's a kid. But he's already 75 overall and 6'6". Six six. God knows what his mum was feeding him, but even so, he looks like a monster as a backup centre-half. So I don't know why he wasn't in the promising tab, but he looks really, really decent as a third-slash-fourth-choice centre-half. And also this guy as well, Andros Mosquera. He does show potential. He shows great potential. He's a 5'10", 73-rated Spanish striker. I think as a poacher, could be pretty decent. Get that attacking work rate up to high. That'll only take him six weeks, plus improve the stamina and the strength as well. He's got a good finishing on, on him already. I think he'll be a decent squad striker in this team. And also the other player I looked in the free agents tab was this guy, Pablo Abeledo. He's not the fullback I wanted. The one I did when I went to Barcelona, you would have seen as I went past him. Looked incredible. This guy, not quite as much, but he could be all right. Four star, four star, high, high work rates, decent pace, decent defensive stats as well. And only 18 years old. 72 overall should have some decent growth on him. So, yeah, Avalado comes in for another Spanish freebie as we continue to assemble the Spanish court and fill the squad out. Still following that, John Stones did go to Bayern Munich. He's off to the Allianz for 25.5 mil. So, like I said, we're going to totally change the back line here at Real Madrid. Sell the old players, bring in the younger ones. And speaking of young players, guys, whose regen is this? I think you know. The contract negotiations bugged out, but he did sign the thing. Gabriel Correa, Brazilian left wing that can also play through the middle. That has potential to be special. 79 rated, 17 years old. I think he was released by the Santos Academy and probably thought he was on his way to Barcelona. But instead, Neymar's regen is coming to Real Madrid. Hey, we've got Ansu Fati here. Why not Neymar's regen as well? Yeah, Gabriel Correa. That dude looks unbelievable. Potential to be special. We found Messi's regen last year in Salas as well. Now we've got Neymar's regen at the Bernabeu. Buzzing with that. And also buzzing with this as well. Brentford! Brentford coming to the coast. If one of my players, Thibaut Courtois, is going back to West London, but not to Chelsea, but to the community stadium as Morgan Jackson goes to Wolves for 65 mil. I, I, he was like an enemy of ours when we were uh, managing Brentford. So to turn him from an enemy to a hero, now nah, we know who the true hero is in this save. So Jackson's going back to England. He's off to Molyneux again. That's a great deal for us there because Koroga, as you can see, 83 overall, 21 years old. I'd rather him playing through the heart of the middle of the pitch, but that'll take him too long to change there. So we'll have him as an advanced playmaker in this team. But also, speaking of players going to England, oh, what did I say last season? Get this guy in the Premier League. And Jurgen Klopp was listening. He said, OK, all right, I'll do it. No one else is going to do it, so I'll do it. Every time he played against an English side, he had a stormer. Elias Timmermans, who I was thinking about bringing with me to the Bernabeu, has gone to Anfield. Yeah, I love that. I really, really do. Thank you, Liverpool, because I wanted him in the Premier League. He deserves to be there, and he is. So after all of those sales there, we had around 320 million in the budget. And I decided to make a big signing and possibly bring in the first of a few Galacticos for the summer window. And guys, you might have, fa you might have seen this guy on my transfer shortlist when I was with Milan. I found him on my first season at San Siro. I just never had the cash to bring him in. But I think you know whose regen this is. Spanish? Playing in Ligue 1? Oh, come on. 
Who else could it be? Yes, Sergio Ramos, Real Madrid club legend. His regen is at Leon, who won Ligue 1 last season, as we remember. But after negotiating a £125 million pound deal with the French side, German Ledesma, Sergio Ramos' regen is at the Bernabeu and it just feels right. Five-star skill moves on the centre-half, low-high work rates, 94 strength, 98 jumping at six foot four. This guy is going to win every single aerial duel. An 88 overall, I really wanted him at the San Siro, but in the end, it was a blessing in disguise I couldn't afford him because he's going to come here to Real Madrid where he belongs. And he and Castaneda as a CB duo a young Spanish CB duo, both in their early 20s. That, to me, is a brilliant, brilliant centre-half partnership to have for all the years we're here at the Bernabeu. I absolutely love that. Sergio Ramos' region, welcome home. So, following out after the centre-side deal to Valencia fell through, we negotiated a deal with Oni Gunnar Solskjaer, our head of transfer negotiations with Manchester United. £37 million was the deal we negotiated there with the Red Devils. And also, we had this bid for Ansu Fati. Yeah, I don't know where Fulham have got that money from, but fair play. But even so, after rejecting that, we saw the Courtois has gone to West London. He's off to Brentford. I don't know why, but it's still kind of reminding me of Petr Cech going to Arsenal. I don't really know why, but even so. Courtois has gone to Brentford there. And it was a bid for a rebound uh, Wolves wanted to take. And I was like, lads, you just gave me one of your Spanish attacking midfielders. Why did you do that if you wanted to bring another one in instead? But even so, of course, we said no. And also, center size deal does go through. He's off to Old Trafford. 31 years old, and despite being 85 overall, which is a great starting overall to me, like I said, I was going to replace this back line. You know, we had Andy Robertson, Luke Shaw, John Stones, Marcos as well. These guys are all in their 30s, and whilst they've got evident quality, what did the board say to us when we took over? Build a Spanish core and make the team younger. So as I continue with the trend there of signing Spanish players and players with first team quality as well, I thought, why not get another player that could be considered a Galactico? He's been linked to Real Madrid before, and I had to pull this deal off. Pedro Porro at the Etihad Stadium, valued at 62 mil. However, I felt I could get him on the cheap from Manchester City, and I could as well. I offered them Luke Shaw, former Red Devil, plus £37.5 million, pounds, and Pep said yes, because while Shaw's got the ability, he is now in his mid-30s. Porro is 28 in the prime of his career right now, and at 87 overall, he signs a four-year, £175,000 a week deal, and this guy is unreal. If you watch my realistic CM with Barcelona last year, you'll know how good this guy is, but Shaw goes to the Etihad. The reason I did that is because Manchester United last year, if you remember the CL final, they had three former Man C players, Gabriel Jesus, Bernardo Silva and Rodri, all three at Old Trafford. I thought, you know what, it's only fair we give Man City a former Manchester United player. Realism has gone out of the window when you're eight seasons into career mode. So Luke Shaw's gone to the Etihad there. The Manchester derbies must be wild. They just changed jerseys at half time, I think. But even so, Poro is in. And again, this dude is unreal. He is the complete wing back in this team. So we've got him for just 37.5 mil, plus a player in Luke Shaw who, despite having a good overall, wasn't going to get used here at Real Madrid and was on the transfer list. I think that is an amazing piece of business there. I'm really, really happy with that. And it reminded me of the Morgan Jackson deal. You know, we obviously gave an English player back to the Premier League in exchange for a Spanish player. We've done the same there with Manchester City. So one of the final pieces of business we would do in today's episode, as you could see, was replace our left back. As we know, Shaw's just gone to the Etihad Stadium. What a timeline. This is Andy Robertson has now moved on to Milan. And after we sold Alexandro to Lazio, I wasn't planning to sell him. But for 35 mil, I thought the deal was pretty decent there as he's off to the Serie A. Barcelona signed the replacement I wanted in Jose Gaia. But there are so many great Spanish left backs, I knew I had a few different options to choose between. There was Angelino, Alex Centeles, Grimaldo, who unfortunately had also just moved on to Nice, Sergio Aguilon and Fran Garcia, former Real Madrid players as well. And in the end, I decided to go for Centeles. 
but unfortunately I couldn't because Real Vallecano weren't willing to sell him and I had to pay 91 mil to get him. And as good as he is, at 28 years old, he's not worth 91 mil. As for Grimaldo, he was the second choice. He's just gone to Nice, so I couldn't get him either. So I mean, God, I've missed out on Gaia. I can't get Centelles and I can't get Grimaldo either. So I thought, okay, the two choices for me, I was going to leave Angelino, former Barcelona left back at RB Leipzig. I thought Sergio Reguilon or Fran Garcia. Reguilon now at Leverkusen, Fran Garcia at Sadarim. And I thought, they're both former Real Madrid players. Garcia came through the Real Madrid Academy. And as we want to get some more Spanish players in for the Spanish court, but some homegrown players as well, I thought, why not take him back to the Bernabeu? From the Bernabeu to Real Vallecano to Stade Reim in France, but now he's back at Real Madrid. 32 mil, I think, was the fee. We negotiated with the French side there. He got a crazy big wage increase to return to the Bernabeu, but I hope he'll be worth it. I'll be honest, he wasn't my number one target. He wasn't even my number two target for the left-back role, but he's a former Real Madrid Academy grad, and at 28 years old in the prime of his career, 83 overall. He's got some great stats as well, very quick, and most importantly, looks great on the offensive end. Looks better on the offensive end, and really strong when going for as a creative player. That's what my wing-backs need to have in my teams. So, Fran Garcia returns to the Bernabeu. He'll be our starting left-back here. I love how we've totally changed the back four now and it's all Spanish as well and also making our first 10 signings of the summer transfer window eight of which being Spanish players as well. We're assembling the Spanish core, we're filling the squad out, making it strong in depth and building this identity with Real Madrid. As you can see this is how the team is looking after a transfer special. It's good. We've totally changed the back four and I've got a better bench as well with more squad depth too. Having said that, the job is far from done. There's still one calendar month to go until the transfer window will slam shut. And as we still have over 230 million in the budget, I think we need to sign another Galactico. But that will end today's episode of Korea Mode, guys. Massive thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed. If you haven't, drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. Really hope you enjoyed this episode. One of my favourites of the series. Have a great day. Much love. And I'll see you for the next episode, which you won't want to miss, as the next Galactico arrives at the Bernabeu. Very soon.